The devil is no partner to humans, friends. In fact, he hates our very form since we have been created in God's own image. He inflicts and cripples human bodies with sicknesses and uses them like effigies to vent out his anger against God who expelled him from heaven. And yet, some gullible global elites are working overtime for their master Lucifer to usher in the new world order. They are dreaming that their place is secured in the devil's kingdom. Some of them are so deluded to think that their master even loves them. They destroy sovereign nations by penetrating them, getting involved in the political process, implementing ungodly laws to suppress common people like you and me. They place their demonic idols in the disguise of liberty and justice in prominent places of the society. This way the opinions of the gullible people through the media and the so-called entertainment industry, on the whole, they make the masses simple-minded. In the book of Proverbs, wisdom is putting forth this question. It is asking us how long will we be simple-minded? Now, early on in history, a similar thing happened. It was a few centuries after the great flood of Noah, which was around 3000 BC to be exact. Noah's son Ham, who was the elite of the day, collaborated with the devil and went against Noah's god Yahweh. He also had a way of capturing the minds of young people. In this manner, his family turned the whole world against God. In fact, that's when paganism was born. Now, Ham had a grandson named Nimrod through his son Cush, who was called Bacchus, meaning the son of Cush. And this Nimrod was the most famous person on the face of the earth in those days. Bible calls him the mighty hunter before the Lord. He had established many cities in Mesopotamia by then. His father Cush was ruling Egypt and Ham was with him. Around this time, Italy's first ever king, Commodus Gallus, passed away. Ham grabbed this opportunity and seized the land. Meanwhile, in Mesopotamia, Ham's grandson, King Nimrod, fell for one of the many Lucifer's water names that he used to send to the kings of the earth to charm and indoctrinate them in order to run the world the Luciferian way. Now, this may sound a bit odd to many of you, but do you know of a similar event that took place almost 2500 years later at the beginning of the Roman Empire? Here's the second king of Rome receiving instructions from a water nymph called Igeria. Of course, the whitewashed history we study in our schools won't cover all this. Now, getting back to our story, the water nymph that gained the favor of King Nimrod was Inanna. She was also known as Ishtar, and the Indians call her Kali. We don't know exactly what happened in between her and Nimrod. One fateful night, she murdered him in a ritual sacrifice. Even today, this event is commemorated as Mahashivratri in India. By the way, all these were happening under the direct supervision of Lucifer the Devil. Now, if you look back, Ham partnered with Lucifer the Devil and turned the whole world against Yahweh God for him. And yet, the Devil sent one of his nymphs and murdered Ham's most famous grandson Nimrod. And this is when Ham led the mourning for his grandson Nimrod in Italy. This incident was called Bacchanalia. It's all history. It reflects the unfaithfulness of Lucifer toward humans. However, like George Bernard Shaw once said, we learn from history 
that will learn nothing from history that's why again as the saying goes the history repeats the elites are getting deceived today the bible states that lucifer will manage to form his one world government for a short span of 7 years on earth when that happens you can expect the so called elites to fight among themselves like cats and dogs for power the devil will keep one and kill the other because he is no friend of humans anyway then when jesus returns the devil and the remaining companions will surely reap their rewards thanks for watching